Well, I'm flying solo this week. No Lillian, she's off at school. For those of you who missed Lillian's episode, you should probably go watch it. The kid's an absolute whiz. The nice thing is, no Lillian. But I do have one of her cocktails, so it's definitely the next best thing. Welcome to Ask the Mead Maker, where I, Ricky the Mead Maker, answer your questions about mead making, mead drinking, mead brewing, and really, any question you're willing to send to me. Our first question comes from Steve, and Steve has a mead with young mead off flavor. He wanted to know, if he takes that mead and he puts it back on a yeast cake, the leftover yeast at the bottom of a fermentation, could that yeast re-uptake the off flavors? The answer is, I've heard of people bulk aging on yeast for this exact reason, but I've never heard of someone transferring onto yeast for those purposes, and I think it definitely warrants an experiment. Our next question also comes from Steve because it's an important one that I should have addressed a long time ago. Do I start my batches at the temperature I say that they are fermenting at? If I say it's an 86 degree fermentation, do I start them at 86 degrees? The answer is sort of. The metabolic activity heats up your fermentation as it goes. Now I have these big conical fermenters, they're about a thousand gallons, and I have to have a coolant to hold the temperature down. When you're making the decision about fermentation temperature, bear that activity in mind. If you are in an application where you cannot get rid of that heat, you can't put it in an ice bath or a, a cooler, you have to be very mindful about starting your fermentations too warm. Our next question comes from Scott. It's a very complicated question with a very easy answer. Scott has been following this show for a while, he's been reading my blogs online, and he recently visited Maine Meadworks. And in both locations, Maine Meadworks and at Grenfell, we are a three week fermentation time. And he was worrying that, see, we use a special strain of yeast at our facility and he's only using Lalvin, and they use Y yeast, but they also have a crazy, cool, complicated fermentation system. and. Maybe there are things that big commercial facilities can do that you just can't do as a home brewer. And the thing is, he ended his question by saying, or am I overthinking this and a four week fermentation is okay and I should probably just relax. The answer is watch these episodes, go on my blog, learn techniques. Four weeks is very impressive, just relax. David wants to know what books I recommend for home mead makers. The answer is The Complete Works of Kurt Vonnegut. I actually know what question he was asking. Uh, Shram's The Complete Mead Maker and The Complete Works of Dickens. Our last question comes from James and it's a reader. Hi there, I have a question about your posted recipes in regards to fermentation. Have you adjusted the fermentation temperature for a homebrew scale? I know that at a commercial scale, you can ferment at higher temperatures due to the hydrostatic pressure suppressing phenols and esters. From a beer home brewer's perspective, the temperatures you list are quite high. Hydrostatic suppression of phenols and esters is an amazingly nuanced understanding of the brewing process. It can happen with some yeasts and not others due to where the metabolic activity actually occurs throughout the fermentation. Lager strains fermenting at the bottom, ale strains and wine yeast strains usually fermenting throughout the entire volume, but also in beer, croisoning around the top. I think you may also be on the list this week of people that are overthinking it. Fermented the temperature that works for you at home, taste it. If you don't like the taste, play around with it. It's that simple. The reason we ferment so warm is we actually want a lot of those phenols and esters that come at higher temperatures. If you're getting the right amount at 82 degrees instead of 86, I think you've got it right. That's our last question this week. I just need to send it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? Thank you, Ricky! I'm back from word saying school. It was in Calgary, or as I like to call it, the key west of Canada. This week's word is pressure safe. A lot of people are concerned about using pressure safe vessels when they're brewing. Pressure safe means 
that whatever the working pressure of your beverage is, it is rated for it. That means you need to use special bottles when you are carbonating in them, like force carving or even using priming sugar. That's so that your bottles do not explode. A very important thing. Pressure safe is our word of the week. And the end of our show keeps any of your questions and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Cheers.